Now we have uh, defined intervals, and what we will have to do now is that we need to resolve what is going on in each and every peak. And what that means is that we're going to use a model, which is called Parafact2, to investigate in this particular peak how many different distinct chemical profiles are there. It looks like there's only one, but you will typically have a baseline as well. And sometimes, even though it looks like there's uh, only one thing going on, there might actually be many more things in the data that you don't see immediately. So what we need to do is for each and every interval that we have selected, we need to establish how many things are going on. And what that will provide us with is that once we're done with that, we will have the chemical spectra of all the species in the peak, and we will have the relative concentrations. And all of this is done in what is called models. And we're not going to explain in detail how the modeling is uh, performed. If you're interested in these things, you can Google Parafact2 and uh, find, out, find information on how Parafact2 actually models the GCMS data. But that's technical and not very uh, important uh, for uh, the purpose of Paradise. But what you do need to know, uh, which is crucial, is how to set the settings here. So we will explain that uh, in a little bit. You have to press the modeling options and then you have to choose how many components you think there could be. So the settings here says I'm going to investigate in every interval from one to eight components. And as a basic setting, that's fine. If there are more than eight in some intervals, you will see that later on and we will explain how you can fix that. So it makes perfect sense uh, to do uh, 1 to 8. Basically, you would want to do 1 to 20, but it's going to take a long time. So what you want to do is to save a little time, you keep the maximum number a little bit low. And 8 is a nice compromise. We don't worry about the number of iterations in the algorithm, we just leave it. But what we do want is that we want to have non-negativity in the mass dimension. And that simply means that when it tries to estimate the mass spectra, it will try to estimate them in a non-negative manner. The other one we should not set. And that's important. For technical reasons that we're not going to talk about here. So the only change you need to make here is to impose non-negativity in the mass dimension. And then you say OK. And then you hit this button. Oops. But before I do that, let me just uh, explain what happened uh, in the upper corner. We have this list of intervals, and what you see now is that we have uh, two extra tables. Bexat, can you explain? Yes. So what Rasmus just showed you is uh, will apply to all the intervals that you have selected. But if you go to the upper right corner and if you press instruction here, it will show you in a separate window what all these columns mean. So start, end, number of components, and uh, <coughs> two other information. So let me just explain you what is number of components. If, for example, in the interval one, you don't want uh, components to be one to eight, you can actually set here yourself. You can actually do, let's say, one to four, and for the second one, I don't want 1 to 8, but I want 1 to 5 only. And that's the way you can actually go ahead with the rest of the intervals. And if you don't set, then it will be the, the, mo the options which will set it in the modeling options. And sometimes you don't want to include all the intervals in the model. So if, if that's the case, you can actually exclude the... Uh, uh, sorry. If there is any sample that you don't want to include, you can actually write the sample number. Let's say, for this interval, I don't want sample 1. For this interval, I don't want sample 2. And status here says uh, 1 means that it has to be calculated, and 2 means it is already calculated interval. And zero, if you put, if you put a 0 here, for example, here, 0, which means you calculate all the in par parafact 2 for all the intervals, but interval 2. Very good. Okay, let's start the modeling. 
by just pushing this button. And now is actually a good time to go for coffee or a small vacation because this might actually take a little while. We only had a few intervals here, but in reality we would want to uh, choose all the intervals that we see in our data. And in that case, depending on the number of samples you have, this can easily take uh, more than a day or even days, uh, worst case. But the good thing is you don't have to sit and look at it. Uh, you can just come back later and then uh, see what has happened and go through the results. And that's what we're gonna do. So uh, let's uh, leave for now and let the computer calculate a little bit on all the intervals, not just the ones uh, chosen here.